All right, well, what's up, everybody? Jason and Justin here. What's up, guys? Hope you guys are doing well and uh, ready for another Motivation Monday. We mm -hmm. are ready to get going again. We're continuing our series, Refresh, and so we've been talking about this idea of rest and what it looks like to kind of take advantage of this opportunity we have to really grow closer to God. So I hope you've had a chance this week to, to take some time to rest, to, to do something that really fills up your soul, maybe something fun. I know I did. Um, I hope you guys did as well. So we're continuing this week, but before we do that, um, Justin, how's your week been, man? Man, it's been pretty good. I, uh, I bought an Xbox recently, so uh, uh, that's, that's been eating up a lot of my time. But uh, getting imagine. back into video games a little bit, I haven't had one since high school. So, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm getting back into it. But it's also been really good, too, because I've had a lot of time to do stuff that's like been pushed to the bottom of the to-do list. Uh, so recently, uh, this Saturday, actually, I cleaned my entire apartment, like wow. top to bottom, made it look spotless. Like, okay. It's even nicer than when I first moved in now. So I had so much time to do that, which was really good. And <laughs> I, uh, I usually vacuum like every week. Like I'm, I'm pretty mm -hmm. responsible. Wow, I think that's somewhat. impressive. We, we did not do I that. try to vacuum on a weekly basis, but uh, uh -huh. I usually don't get under the couch. And so this week I was like, you know what? I'm going to move the couch. I'm going to get all the food out from underneath it. And I, I did it. I, I moved wow. the couch. I vacuumed everything. I wiped everything down and like I said, that, that stuff that's at the bottom of the to-do list, like <laughs> all of a sudden we have time to do that now. So it's, it's been a good week for me. That's cool. Hey, it's like, I'm sure at every single person who has a couch, there's always some like hidden gems hidden underneath that couch or, or you're underneath the cushions and there's some money under there, some cash. There's always something good. So I'm glad you're able to find some good stuff. Yeah, no um, money for me, just, no mo oh. just junk. Okay, just junk, some, <laughs> some popcorn, some random chips, <laughs> the good stuff. Pretty much, yeah. Um, I know for me, I actually was doing something similar. Uh, you know, we were cleaning up a little bit. Um, but actually, for me, I wanted to focus a little bit more on uh, cleaning up my car. Um, just a nice car. So, uh, you know, for me, it's uh, Jesse and I, my wife and I, and our son, Eli. He's about going to be two years old come May. So uh, he's getting pretty uh, active now. And one of the things that he likes to do that, um, as I was cleaning up the car this weekend, began to realize some things is that he loves whenever we go out to eat, so say we go to McDonald's, go to the drive-thru, which is kind of what you have to do right now because you can't go in. Sometimes, um, you know, we'll, we'll get the food and then maybe we'll get something to him to eat in the car. Um, and uh, one of the things that he loves to do is to, you know, take a bite and then kind of toss the rest of it. So whether that's in the house, toss it on the floor, you know, toss it anywhere he can find it, maybe toss it at you. You know, he's just... He's got a good arm, man. Future quarterback, I'm sure. But hey, the uh, Patriots need one. So. Yeah, oh no, <laughs> that ain't happening. Uh -uh. <laughs> so yeah, so he loves throwing stuff, and so as I was cleaning this car, I began to realize, you know, I noticed you know, there's something, something a little up in this car, a little bit of a smell. wasn't really sure what it was, uh, but sure enough, as I'm cleaning it, I began to realize there's a lot of random um, items underneath the car, the underneath the chair. And so for me, as I was digging, put my hand out of there, find a little chicken nugget. Now, I don't know about you guys, this is a little side note, but something I realized about um, McDonald's and Wendy's uh, chicken nuggets, not trying to hate on you guys, but I don't think those scenes decompose. And I'm starting to wonder <laughs> if they're actually even food to begin with. Because <laughs> uh, usually food is supposed to go old, it's supposed to rot, you know, kind of decompose. These things have been sitting for a while in my car, and it's, they look <laughs> the exact same. So, <laughs> But here's the real question, though. Did, did you eat it after you found it? <laughs> yeah. No comment. <laughs> I'll plead a fifth. No. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. I would not do that. Um, but I don't know. It, it got me thinking, though, as I, as, I was cleaning up this car and, um, you know, I was thinking about certain things. And I think for a lot of us, you know, when we, we're so busy going and going and going, like, you know, in a car, you're always driving about, you just get in, you get out. You don't really take time to to pause and reflect. And so for me, you know, I had the, I had been smelling this smell in the car for a while, but I never really like, time, took the time to figure out what that smell was. And as I was thinking about that, and it made me think about our own lives as well. A lot of times we have certain things in our lives that um, we don't necessarily notice. There's some things that are kind of stinking things up a little bit, maybe some areas in our lives, some on the inside, some, some heart issues, some struggles, some things that we're going through that we just kind of put on the back burner, we kind of put aside and we just keep going, we're so focused that we miss out on what's going on in our lives. Now, a lot of people around us, they can smell it, they can notice it, they see it, they, you know, but but a lot of times we're not always so aware of those things. And so 
One of the unique things about this idea of, of pressing pause and refreshing is the opportunity for us to really to examine things, to, to look underneath the car seat, to kind of find those chicken nuggets under there. And so, so I think we also have a unique opportunity to do that as well. And so for me, um, there's a passage that I really want to focus on. It's, it's Psalms 139, verses 23 through 24. And it really hits on this idea. Um, David, you know, King David is writing this, uh, this psalm out. And, and so I just want to read these two parts because it's such a good one. And I think it's something that we um, could do in our lives during this season. And so it's Psalms 139, verse 23 through 24. And it says this, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I love this passage. This is something where, you know, David is inviting God to search him. And I think that's a unique idea. And it's something like a phrase, like, okay, cool. But what's interesting, though, is that before in this chapter, he's talking about how God knows everything about him. You know, even before he was born, even, you know, when he was still in his mother's womb, like God knew everything there was about him. And he said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I, I encourage you just look through this entire chapter on your own just to, to kind of go through because it, it's such a good chapter. But he, he already knows that God knows everything about him. But what he's, what he's doing here, I think, is so important for us to remember is that it's one thing, yes, God knows everything about us. He knows our thoughts. He knows our hearts. He knows what we're doing and what we're thinking about. But what David is doing here is he is inviting God to be a part of those things. And so inviting him to say, God, like, search my heart. See if there's any offensive way. Test my anxious thoughts. And so... So I think about the heart, I think about some of the things maybe, maybe for you in your life, you've got some things that um, maybe you've been hurt. Uh, maybe someone's hurt you or broken your trust. And so you've got some struggles there, some pain, some, some loss. And so something you're really struggling with. Maybe it's, you know, as he says, test my anxious thoughts. And so in this unique season, you know, we all have some thoughts and we're all struggling with what's going on around us, all the what ifs, all the things we can't control and, you know, seeing all the things on the news or, or different things going on in our lives. And so there's a lot of anxious thoughts that we have. And so we need to ask God to test those things to help us be aware of those thoughts and, though, and also to see if there's any offensive way in me. And I think for a lot of us, sometimes we don't realize how our actions, the things that we do could be hurtful to other people or even hurtful to ourselves. And uh, I think especially in the season, there's a lot of free time and, you know, the Internet is great, provides a lot of great opportunities. But sometimes there's some things on there that can be self-destructive as well, some very bad habits. And so what's cool about what David does, he says, you know, it's search me, God. I, I know you know everything about me. You created me. You love me. You care about me. And I need your heart. And so he's inviting God in to be a part of helping him work on those things. And so for us, as we think about that, I think there's a great opportunity in this season for us to really slow down and reflect. Yes, God knows everything about you and he loves you. He cares about you. He says you're fearfully and wonderfully made, but he also wants to help you. But we have to let him in. We have to make that choice. And I think this is a great encouragement for us to do that so that, as he says, that God can lead us in the way everlasting. And so there's this choice where we're choosing to let him lead us instead of just going our own way, to stop and say, hey, what's under the car seat? Where am I struggling? That's good. That's, I love that analogy too. Just taking that time to pause and reflect and really asking God yeah. to search us. And so I think before we, before we close out for today, I just have some challenges for you guys this week and some, some practical ways that you can invite God to search your heart. And so the first one that immediately comes to my mind is prayer, right? Like when we're talking about this idea of talking to God and asking yeah. him to search us, prayer should be at the top of our list. And I think for, for a lot of us, our prayer life isn't that deep, if we were to be really honest. I think a lot of us, for our prayer life, it just stops at us praying for meals or something <laughs> and just saying, hey, God, thank you for this food. Amen, let's eat. Like, if that's, <laughs> if that's the extent of our prayers, I think, especially during this season, we have a chance to really go deeper than that. We should be really going deeper than that all the time. But during this season, we have time to just remove all distractions. Yeah. You know, I would encourage you this week to find a place where you can just remove all distractions from you and go and pray. Maybe that's taking a walk or going to your room. You know, find out what works for you. But that would be my first challenge for you this guy for this week is to just remove all those distractions uh, in your prayer life. And so... The second thing that I'd want to challenge you guys to do is reach out to someone. Mm. 
I think a lot of times God wants to speak to us and he, he uses other people to do that a lot of times. And That's good. So uh, when you read the Bible, you see a lot that it talks about seeking wise counsel. It uses this phrase a couple different times in the book of Proverbs. And so I think that's something that we should each be doing in our lives yeah. is seeking wise counsel. And so that's one of the reasons we have these online student groups who want to stay connected with you guys during this season. But even beyond that, I'd challenge you to reach out to a, a small group leader or someone from your past who can really help you draw closer to God. And so reach out to that person uh, this week. And then the final thing I just want to encourage you guys with uh, as we finish up this Motivation Monday is as we're doing devotionals, as you're spending time in the Word of God, just slow down when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times we, we read the Bible and uh, we're like, okay, I got through this chapter. And then we just shut the book or close the app and we're like, we go straight to YouTube, go straight to Instagram. And we don't even take that moment mm -hmm. to pause and ask, okay, what was God trying to teach me there? Mm -hmm. And so we talk about talking to God, but we also need to be ready to listen. And so I think a lot of times when we're having that set time that we have in the word, just take that time to pause, reflect, talk to God and ask him to search you. And so those would be my three big challenges for you guys this week. And hopefully it's something that you can put into practice. Yeah, I love that idea of just asking God, like, hey, you know, what, what are you trying to tell me here? What, what can I learn from this? And so it's kind of like the idea, you know, we talk about that car, you know, seeing things underneath and. And I don't know about you guys, but if you ever, you know, if you're driving, I got your license or maybe you heard your parents talk about it, but we all have blind spots, right? Mm. Certain things when we're driving that we can't see, you know, our mirrors can give us some visibility of things behind us, you know, the side mirrors can give us, but there's this little area on the side behind our cars called a blind spot. It's something that we cannot see. And so when you're going to other people, when you're, you're saying, hey, help me, help me understand, be honest with me, be real with me. Um, you're giving them permission to help you see what's in your blind spot because we all have blind spots. I do. Justin does. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Especially being a Patriots fan. He's got a big <laughs> one there. Um, but I think you're aware of that. So maybe it's not a blind spot. Yeah. But we all have certain things that we're struggling with and some things we don't even realize we're struggling with. And we have a unique opportunity during the season to, to reach out, to reach out to God, to reach out to wise people that can, that can be real with us and be honest with us as we invite them to search us. Um, to search our hearts. And so um, I think if we can do that, if we can really take advantage of this opportunity, um, just think about how your life could be different. If you really worked on a lot of those issues, some of the hurts in your life, some of the insecurities, some of the, the, the anxious thoughts that are weighing you down, and anxiety can really affect us in so many different ways if we allow it to. And so I, I would imagine if you were able to take that time, your life could look different. Your life could be, there could be more peace, a peace of mind and a freedom to really go out and, and do all the things that you're called to do because there's not all these blind spots. There's not all these things underneath the seat that are stinking up your life. And so I encourage you to, to invite God in this week to really search you and to, to reach out to some folks. So Yeah, and we all have this time that we're all stuck in it right now and we, we can't change what's going on, but we can come out of it stronger. And so I think that's really what we'd want to encourage you. Take this time, grow closer to God, and we're going we're gonna to come out stronger. Yep. So I hope this uh, Motivation Monday motivates you to, uh, to really connect with God during this time. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. We'll see you in the student groups on yeah. Tuesday and Thursday. See you tomorrow night, middle school students.